Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today's episode we're going to be reviewing, testing out, the Raspberry Pi 5 4 gig model. Going to put on the heatsink, put it in its case, knock that out real quick, and we're going to load Raspberry Pi 5 OS. See how it runs, show you what's inside it. Maybe we'll get around to testing some YouTube videos and see how the small cooler that I have works and keeps the temperatures at an acceptable level. So we'll run those things. I haven't seen too many people test the 4 gig model, so I'm glad that I have one. I got lucky. It's an early Christmas present and we're going to test it out. I'm super excited and I hope you are too. So let's get going. Come on, let's go. I got my uh, micro HDMI adapter from Amazon because, well, I didn't have any for these ports, so I needed it. And I'll put all this stuff that I have here, as far as the peripherals and stuff, and the link in the description below in case you're interested. So, these are pre applied heat sink. Hopefully, I can do this right. So, it goes this way on the Pi, like so, right? And just you can double check before you put this on there because once these stick, they stick. The thermal pads, I mean. Kind of line it up, you know, for the holes here. And then sort of like the old style um, Intel coolers, you just press it in until it kind of clicks. And then it kind of goes through each side. And of course, the second one is going to be a little bit more difficult, but just keep it up. Don't break the board. And then you're on. And that's what it looks like with the cooler on. And this will go in here for the power for the cooler. So there you are. So that's the active cooling solution with the thermal pads. And now we've got to hook up the HDMI output cable. And the other end is a standard HDMI port, which I'll hook up to the 4K uh, monitor TV. This is an NVMe USB uh, 3.0 drive adapter. And we're going to try that. I've already flashed the 64 bit Raspberry Pi OS um, bookworm. It goes in the case like this, like this, and then this might not fit the way it is because it has a fan of its own in here and you can't fit both in here so you're going to have to take this off uh, and it pops out and you can remove this if you have this case. Um, and it comes out like this. So, and then it'll go like this with the top removed. Now you don't have to leave this like this, but it kind of protects your Raspberry Pi, you know? You could leave it open like this. You could put the case back on and it does give a little airflow. There's little vents here, but for the purpose of testing, I'm gonna leave it open and see how it fares. Maybe it'll, cause I think it for, for right now, it's just gonna be able to suck a lot of more air through there without having to deal with that. It's not that it's impeding it a lot, but you get the picture. It kind of looks better with it and it's easier to handle. Just hook your peripherals up, you know? And then when you go here, plug it in and see if we get a signal out. No, all right, we are first boot for Raspberry Pi. I think it booted from the NVMe S on the uh, USB adapter. This is pretty cool. All right, this is a simple setup, I suppose. Keyboard works. So I uh, do the password. So we got Wi-Fi. To set up 
or hardwire. We could put the Ethernet cable in here. For some reason, it's not picking up the Wi-Fi. And uh, the system, operating system, will now be checked if it needs to be updated. I see the internet, Ethernet flashing. So, and I also see the USB drive flashing. I'm going to show you the mess of cables in a second here. Impromptu setup. You can see this is accessing, right? And here we go. It's running off of the USB 3.0 NVMe adapter. That's pretty amazing. I flashed it with Belena Etcher earlier and uh, it just detected it and ran it. Bring it back when these updates are done. So let's check out this desktop, shall we? First time in a long time for me. All right, up here, you've got your Raspberry Pi icon, which has the drop-down menu for most of your apps installed. Graphics, you've got an image viewer just for viewing, you know, basic pictures and stuff. Here's some games. Boing, soccer, ca cav cavern? I don't know what these are. Is this like, uh, man, is this like a Donkey Kong or something? Oh yeah, well, it looks pretty crisp. I keep dying though. Enough of this little addicting game. Enough, enough I say. Ah. Uh. Okay, so. That was pretty smooth. I mean, yeah, there's nothing really to it, but. Um, what is this? Infinite Bunner? Oh, it's like a frogger, but it's like. Ah, uh, you die. So it keeps going and going and going and going and going. Okay. Clearly, I'm not adept enough to play this game. So, that's cool. Other, what is this? Cat imagers? Cat images? Oh, you can design PCBs? No doubt. I don't know what this is. Oh, you can... You can, uh, you can uh, create your own little PCB. What do you have, tools? Maybe you can import schematics on here. Wow, look over here. This is cool. It seems like it's frozen up though. Heat sink's fairly warm on this device. I think my Pi has locked up. What the hell? Yes, everyone. My Raspberry Pi has locked up and basically doing nothing but opening this one program. Keep in mind there was probably still bugs in the system. Let me reboot. All right, we're back after our reboot and it was very fast by the way. So accessories, you got your package manager, archiver, calculator, doc viewer, file manager, your imager. Let's look at uh, file manager here. So after the install of the OS flashed on here and updating programs, we got 209 gig left. So it took a little chunk of change. That's not bad though. All right. And your file manager is just what it is. It's just, you know, where all your stuff is. And Look, they got it. Imager, Raspberry Pi image program for flashing stuff. And if you launch it, it's going to come up with your image program. Simple thing. If you don't have Belena Etcher, you can use this as well. And go from there. You can get something up to your USB ports and flash it. Um, uh, accessories and back to here, task manager. 
see what kind of resources are being used. Yeah. Looks pretty cool. Menu bar, top, bottom, arrange it, switch it around. So there is customization to be had on this system. To this question, can you use your Orange Pi 5 as a daily desktop? Well, at least an entry level desktop for basic users. To meet this goal, I've came up with a few key criteria. So my final thoughts on this Raspberry Pi 5 4 gig model. Well, the active cooler was pretty compact and it seemed to work decently. Um, the Raspberry Pi 5 itself seemed fairly responsive and Bookworm OS seemed very well-rounded and feature full. It had enough apps and even a couple intro level games to keep you occupied and you can add more stuff to it as you need. It ran fairly well off the USB NVMe adapter. Hopefully in the future I can test uh, one of the Raspberry Pi hats so it can put the NVMe directly onto the system. But I don't have that yet and have to wait for that. Other thoughts are, I think during the web browsing it was a little bit laggy and I think that's because I need to set the desktop uh, resolution a little bit lower. And even though I updated all the drivers prior to the testing, I think the graphics drivers for the Raspberry Pi aren't really up to date and they seem to be in need of a, a release, a tweak, however you want to say it. And I heard that they're going to have one coming out um, late December or January, I think. I'm sure improvements will be made over the next couple months and performance will get better and better with this little unit. In my next videos, hopefully I'll be able to test out other operating systems, maybe a little bit higher in gaming perhaps, and see what it can do. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, because you don't want to miss any upcoming content that's going to be coming soon. Thanks for watching. Remember this tech.